What's up, y'all? So by now, you've probably either seen or heard about this viral clip of Jonathan Owens and uh, Simone Biles. They are recent newlyweds, and they went viral from their appearance on the Pivot podcast, which I recommend you guys actually go watch. Today, I want to talk about how the public discourse that I've seen since this went viral is disappointing. I think men are missing the point. I think women are missing the point. I'm hoping that some of these viral moments and pop culture events are good teaching tools for our community in particular. I'm going to play the clip and I want women to pay attention to when he says he didn't want a relationship. And I also want men to pay attention to her demeanor and also the picture in the corner as it illustrates her affinity for him. Mm, let me see who this is. Gymnastics. I ain't never, you know, I, I never really paid attention to gymnastics. So it, it, it piqued my curiosity, you know, so I'm like, okay, that's, that's, I swiped her and it said we match. So I'm just like, oh, okay, so I'm going to see what's up. So I go do my workout and I come back and I get like, I had some likes on my Instagram, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this might be it. So I'm like, okay. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till I, you know, take a shower and everything. Then I come back to my phone and then she messages me on the app like, Hey, you know what I mean? And I'm, man, that's a, man, this gotta be fake. Like, I don't know, just, I didn't know who she was at the time, but like the first thing that I saw was that she just had a bunch of followers. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, she gotta be good. If, yeah. I promise you, I'm a, I'm a real life story. When she won the Olympics, I was in college and we didn't have NBC, we didn't have Olympic channels and we're in camp, we're in camp. Late, late, late July, early August. So I'm not paying attention to, you know, so I never would have had a moment to where I would have watched like, Jonathan, I'm going to let you finish your story, man. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> but like I was saying, man, she, she messaged me. This is like a Tuesday. And we, we, we were texting back and forth. And then we hung out Friday, man. And um, we couldn't do much. It's over happened. Everything was shut down. So um, she came through down, um, down to Houston. She lived in the suburbs. So she had to drive about 45 minutes to me. Um, then the rest is history, man. So, so you was really the catch in. I always say we the men the catch, man. I always say we the catch, man. Yeah. So she really booked you. She did though. She is did, what you said. Cause I, I was fighting it. I was fighting it. So I was you, fighting it. So in truth, if I say this out loud, was Jonathan Owens ain't really want some on ball. Is and, what you're saying. <laughs> At the time, <laughs> that's what you're not gonna say that. That's what you're saying. I was afraid. I, I was afraid to commit. I'm like, ah, I'm, man, this is, my, this is my third year. You know, I'm trying to, ah, I'm like, it's kind of early. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, man, it happened when you least expect it. And we hung out, man. It was like we hit it off instantly. You know, we just laughed the whole night. So basically, people are losing their minds because at the end of the clip, he alluded to being the catch and he believes that men are the catch. And I know you know, in social media world right now, the debate is who is the prize. I don't necessarily think it means the same thing, but they are related. But from the perspective of a catch, I think of fish. You're fishing and you want to catch fish. Guess what? Fish don't want to be caught. <laughs> fish enjoy the water. They don't enjoy your boat. And when I alluded to men loving more authentically than women in the recently viral clip on Instagram. That's part of what I was talking about. Men do not idealize or fantasize about love and relationship. We value and prioritize our independence. We value and prioritize our mission. And with that being said, we're also not raised on fairy tales the way women are. So men, most men, especially men with options, men with an abundance mindset, are not super enthusiastic about locking it down and retiring, especially early in their life. So when the brother said he just moved to Houston, he was focused on his football career, he wasn't trying to be in a relationship with anybody. I think what women miss is that it doesn't matter if you're Simone Biles. But the lesson should be, what was she able to do to change his mind? How was she able to impact this brother so much that he reluctantly <laughs> gave up his independence and his aspirations as a man to be the captain of his own ship and have options and the whole nine and enjoy being a single, handsome athlete? What did she do? And I think this is part of what's missed on women when we see clips like this. Because a lot of women, unfortunately, think that just being is enough. And like I've said before, queens don't make kings. The recently deceased queen of uh, 
England. Her husband's name wasn't King. Her husband's name was Prince. And I know there's some one-off tribes in Africa where women are the decision makers, but on the macro, men are the decision makers. Particularly when you consider our roots, especially as black folks in polygamy. And also, biologically speaking, like there's more of an incentive for women to seek out the best possible man to procreate with. And there's more of an incentive for a man to seek out an abundance of women to procreate with. And that informs some of the ways that we move. And we have to be honest about that. So when we see young men who are not enthusiastic about locking it down and getting into a relationship, very often those young men are the desirable ones. And when we see young women who are super enthusiastic about locking down a man, it's rooted in biology. So it doesn't make him a bad dude. But what we should study is what did she do? And guess what? It wasn't. It wasn't gymnastics. It wasn't Olympic gold medals. It wasn't her Instagram following. It wasn't her bank account. Because men, men who are worth their weight in gold do not give two shits about any of that stuff. Those things could be additional factors that could boost you over another woman. But at the core, it's some of the intangibles. Because guess what? Your money is your money. That's how society operates. And my money is our money. How much money is in your guy's bank account? I got like 1200 Like 70K? Yeah. 70K? What you mean 70K? What do you mean? My dad gave it to me. You made me pay for all this shit and you got 70K? You're my boyfriend. Account. Why wouldn't you pay for my things? Well, I mean, if you got 70K, I mean, you should be paying for Yeah, but shit. usually the guy's supposed to pay for the things. This is a serious problem. Like, I'm not even kidding. I paid for What dinner. are you getting mad at me for? That was $400. You're supposed to pay for my shit. But you got 70K. You're my boyfriend. You're supposed are to you? pay are you kidding shit. me? Yo, dude, this is actually... It's not my fault you're broke. How is that my fault? We're done, then. What, what do you mean we're, we're done? done? We're done, then. If you're gonna fucking scream at me, then leave! In the clip, he alluded to not only swiping on him and messaging him first, but also driving 45 minutes to come see him at that time when the 2020 stuff was happening. And essentially, she was the one who shot her shot, even though she was Simone Biles. Olympian. The message for brothers is, and I've talked about this during my her him case study, if you are her him, whatever she's identified a him to be, you won't have to be the one showing asymmetrical effort. Sometimes she'll be the one showing asymmetrical effort. Instead of focusing on everything that you can do to buy a woman's affection and then getting mad and butt hurt that she didn't reciprocate in the manner that you, you, you saw fit based on what you spent or what you did, instead of that focus on being the caliber of man that she wants to make efforts to get. Obviously, some guys are genetically gifted and they don't have to work as hard like this brother, good looking brother. But in other cases, it's about what's your mission? What's your purpose? And guess what? When you have a mission and a purpose and you're working towards it diligently, women will gravitate towards wanting to help you, help meet your goals. But often, if you're stuck in this cycle of buying women's affection, subconsciously you're saying that women's affection is a commodity that can be bought, sold, and traded. And whether they can articulate that, they feel it. They're gonna go with the guy where it's more organic. I just wanna do for him. Because very often in these spaces, we just complain about what women are not, how women are the spawn of Satan, but we don't actually consider the ways that we participate in that. And this whole thing reminds me of a couple of years ago when uh, Toby Nuigwe and his wife Fat, I think at the time they were still dating and they were doing the uh, Twisted Up series where she twists his hair and he raps. But on this particular episode, they were talking about how they met and it was a similar situation. Toby didn't want Fat. But guess what? Now they're married with a couple of kids. But ladies, instead of focusing on what did she do to earn this man's reluctant affection, you're focused on how dare he not want her. And men will disgrace you and men will make you look stupid in the whole night. Guess what? The caliber of man that most women want, he is a LeBron James equivalent. And guess what LeBron James didn't do when he was 20? He didn't retire. And the unfortunate reality is most women are not in the mindset or do not have the disposition or the skill set to inspire a man to lock it down with you because you feel entitled to it. You feel like because you have a vagina and you cook and you clean and you do all the things on paper that you were told 
makes you a good woman. And sometimes you don't do any of those things, but you just think inherently you're a good woman because of movies and music and the whole nine that you can't fathom why he doesn't want you. Guess what? Number one, you might not actually be a good woman. And number two, you might not be good enough to inspire this caliber of man to want to lock it down. So instead of complaining about what he said or what he didn't say, start studying. Study Simone Biles and not her achievements. Study Savannah James and not her achievements. Study Fat Nuigwe and not her achievements. Study Kerry Washington and not her achievements because it's a similar situation. Kerry Washington, well-known actress. She's married to uh, my Nigerian brother, my Igbo brother, Namdi who is now ironically doing his Hollywood thing, but similar situation, NFL athlete and superstar. But simply just being upset because men aren't parroting what you want to hear, it gets you nowhere, ladies. I see a lot of y'all mad at Simone Biles, um, Beyonce, or I don't know what he is, for saying that basically he deprives in their relationship. I don't know why y'all mad at him. He just telling the truth. They did that interview and he basically told us a story about how Simone Biles chased him. So yeah, he is the prize. We want men to be so masculine and this and that, and we, uh, you know, talk bad about men being sassy and feminine. Well, yeah, when they were the ones getting axed out on dates, why? <laughs> if I was a man getting axed out on a date, I would ask for flowers too. I, I'd want her to open my car door too, because I'm her girlfriend now. Y'all make these men y'all y'all girlfriends, and then y'all surprised when they be acting feminine and sassy like they the prize. They are the prize. You asked them out, sis. You chased him. <laughs> I mean, what, what did you expect? You expected for him to act all masculine after you already took that away from him? Like, this is why I never tell women to chase no man. Like, you should never be proposing to no man. You should never be approaching no man. People ask me this all the time. Like, you never approached a guy? No, I never have a day in my life. A day in my life, I would never approach no man and ask him out on a date. Why would I do that and give him the automatic upper hand? No, of course he's surprised. I just gave him the power and, like, the whole dynamic. Like, why would he chase me? After I just chased him. <laughs> like, what? Like, come on now. So let's dive deeper. Another thing that stood out to a lot of people is the fact that he said he didn't know who she was. And obviously our reflex is to not believe black men. Ironically, hashtag believe black women. But when black men say stuff, he's either lying or he's just daft. But I think the people who are triggered by this are actually the ones who might be daft. Because what you didn't account for is the fact that this brother is an NFL athlete. You didn't account for the amount of time and dedication from childhood that it takes to be that one of 1% who makes it to the NFL. You didn't account for how myopic you have to be to be a man in general, but to be an athlete in particular. You didn't account for the fact that he's from Missouri. And kind of like I alluded to in the uh, No Riz case study that I did about Zion Williamson, a lot of high level athletes, they grow up in a bubble. And in that case, I was talking about the fact that they don't have riz. And to reiterate, part of the reason athletes don't really have the type of riz that we think they do is number one, some of them are genetically gifted, so they don't have to spit game. Women just flock to them. If you're 6'5", you have a jawline and you're well known in the community, women will just come to you and you don't have to talk. You don't have to say anything. So you never actually have to develop the ability to game or seduce women because you do it just by existing. But the other reason is between practice, after practice, two a days, AAU, summer workouts, spring workouts, camp, you're not really outside like that. So the opportunity for you to pay attention and learn, pick up and game and all that stuff usually isn't there. So that's how you see the Zion Williamson's of the world impregnate questionable women and mess with adult film stars and different things like that. Because the reality is a lot of athletes are are corny. Let's be honest, but they don't have to be anything else. So when he said he didn't know who she was, he was being honest. And the reality is, I mean, even if men are watching the Olympics, most men, unless, you know, you are just an eclectic kind of guy. You're not watching gymnastics. <laughs> you might watch Team USA play, uh, play basketball. You might watch the track and field, but you're not watching gymnastics. And especially, I mean, he's a younger millennial slash older Gen Z. So between football and 
interests, video games, different things that dudes are actually interested in, yeah, he probably doesn't know who Simone Biles is. And fellas, the lesson for you here is that's probably why he was so successful with her, other than, you know, the fact that she found him physically attractive. But can you imagine being Simone Biles and everybody now is trying to suck your dick because you have gold and you're successful? And then this guy comes along who could give a crap about who you are because he doesn't know who you are. So to him, you're just another girl. I imagine that's refreshing from the perspective of Simone Biles. I imagine he provided her the opportunity to be a person in a way that she might not have had for a long time. And the way that men drop the ball very often with women, especially women who are beautiful or successful, whatever the case may be, you're just another fan, my boy. And she will treat you and accord you as such. Even if she's a great person and a great woman, unfortunately, you just zoned yourself past the friend zone into the fan zone. So pay attention, brothers. Now, ladies, again, I've been talking a lot about this passport bro phenomenon. And I've been warning against it because a lot of women are dismissive and saying that it's men who are ugly and they don't have any game and they can't get women in America. So that's why they're going overseas. The reality is something very different. And perhaps there's something to be learned from Simone Biles. Simone Biles understands that she is not, outside of her accomplishments, she is not aesthetically the woman of a black man's dreams. (laughs) She is not blessed in the front and the back, but she has to compensate for that. And oftentimes, fellas and ladies, you find that the women who are getting chose aren't the women that you might assume. You're a super fine friend who has double Ds and the roundest, softest butt. She's still single, And the frumpy, fugly girl, she's married or she's engaged. Why is that? I saw one video a while back. A woman was wondering, why do men wife up the plain Janes? Let's actually explore that instead of asking those questions dismissively without actually wanting the answer. The answer is because those plain Janes, as you call them, are exceptional in ways that might not be immediately apparent. Those plain Janes complement a man in his mission in ways that a woman who's used to being the center of attention and the star of the show might not be in practice doing. So guess what? Those super attractive IG women, they get used up. They get smashed and dashed. And when a man is ready to settle down and build legacy, the woman that he chooses might not be the one who's the most physically appealing but she has attributes and she helps meet the mission of his life in ways that you might not know. I've got a couple of friends of mine who have lived overseas or currently live overseas. And what they say is that the level of humility of women in general and attractive women in particular is night and day compared to the United States. They say that a woman who would be considered an eight in the United States is a six in the country. Great example, Ruby Rose, who's been going viral recently because of her uh, OnlyFans tricks. She's Ethiopian. Go to Ethiopia. What you'll discover is that Ruby Rose in her country of origin is not a standout. So from an aesthetic standpoint, This idea that American women are the most competitive, it's simply not true. And when you compound that with the disposition aspect, the agreeableness, the niceness, the cordialness, the non-entitledness, you quickly realize that unfortunately the future that we're heading into is not one where more American women and unfortunately women in our community get wifed. What my friends are telling me is that not only are these women objectively more attractive on average, they're also more humble on average because of the environment. And it's not because they're illiterate. Some of those women speak five languages. 
So this uh, narcissistic arrogance that we're hearing from women, oh, y'all going over there and getting prostitutes, it's simply not true. Some of these women are far more educated than you. Some of these women are multilingual. And anybody who studied neurology understands that your brain works a whole lot harder when it's able to speak multiple languages. But in a lot of those countries as well, the attitudes towards sex work are a little bit different. So these women also understand that you not only have access to other attractive women, but you have access to sometimes more attractive workers of that trade. So there's a humility there. I can't leverage my vagina like I would be able to in the United States. I can't leverage my arrogance like I would be able to in the United States. So guess what? I have to meet you in good faith. And I have to make sure that your experience with me is better than any other woman that you're going to come across. That's not the mindset of women in this country. And we have to be honest about it if we plan on fixing it, because simply just yelling at men and saying that you need to stay in your country, it's not sustainable. Guess what? These boys in middle school and high school are coming back and reporting to their parents that black girls are just mean and that's when they like you. So ladies, especially mothers of sons, have you ever wondered why your son doesn't date a girl who looks anything like you? And I know sometimes you are comfortable with just assuming colorism and texturism. But have you ever considered that it's something more? Have you ever considered that he may not see any black female representation of femininity? You're in your masculine energy. The girls at his school are in their masculine energy. So guess what? When Sarah or Elizabeth smiles at him because that's the white woman disposition, he's going that way. And we have to start being honest about that. Now, fellas, Psychax talked about the admired versus the admirer. And simply put, he believes, and I tend to agree with this, women do not want to be the admired. They want to be the admirer. He said that if you're looking up to a woman... It kind of means she's looking down to you. And the privilege is actually being the admirer. You get to live your own rom-com. You get to live your own fantasy. The person who is on the pedestal does not. And oftentimes, men in friend zones, men who struggle with women, that's the mistake that they make, is they prematurely pedestalize women in a way that men who women actually gravitate to don't. She gets to be in love with him. She doesn't get to be in love with you because you're so in love with her. Please don't let that go over your head. About a month ago, I came to his mom and his sister, and I asked him. What you asked him? I asked them, would they get him to me? Mm. This is his daughter. She said yes. Yeah. Oh. His mom said yes. Yeah. Oh. oh. I saw a quote recently that said women negotiate like the British during colonialism. <laughs> and I thought it was hilarious. 
But I think some of these things we're seeing are kind of a, a crescendo moment. It signals the fact that women in some ways have abused their power. And the consequence is men who are less traditional. The consequence is men who are less willing to pay the cost, less willing to take you on $300 dates, less willing to court you and all that good stuff. Because the entire time, that wasn't actually what won you over. And men have observed this. And on top of that, even if that is what won you over, that doesn't mean we get your cooperation. That doesn't mean we get peace. So a lot of men and young boys are saying, what's the point? So ladies, um, we can continue to minimize this conversation of toxic masculinity. But if we actually want to make progress, we have to acknowledge the fact that women knowingly or unknowingly participate in perpetuating this masculinity that now you want to complain about. The future is kind of bleak. Men have no reason to be shiverous anymore. Men are realizing that going the traditional route of being the person who is pursuing perpetually is not how you win. Men are starting to realize that you have to become him. And she'll pursue you even if she's Simone Biles. And we're going to have to deal with that future. Because really, it's, it's no different than the past. It's just more obvious. So my message is, instead of being triggered when you see clips like this, actually engage in critical thought and critical analysis as a man and as a woman. And notice in the clip, she didn't interrupt him. She looked at him, even though in some way you could make the argument he was embarrassing her. She looked at him with admiration. She had the, I am so lucky to have him look in her eyes. And I believe every man deserves to feel that at least once in your life. And you can't fake that. And it's, it's not something you learn. It comes naturally. Again, even if you're Olympian, all-time great Olympian, Simone Biles, dating a football player who is relatively unknown. Please subscribe, like this video, share it with people that you care about, and also head over to Patreon and consider becoming a member. There'll be exclusive content dropped there. And uh, I'm actually gonna be paying more effort and attention to creating content for my family over there at Patreon. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all be safe. Peace.